I decided that if one vampire was scary in Dracula, if the whole world became vampires, it would really be scary. And oddly enough, I regard that as my only science fiction novel. Is that all it has been since I inherited the world? Only three years. It seems like a hundred million. I was hired by Hammer Films to uh, write a screenplay for them. At that time, I was afraid of flying. I took, <laughs> I took the Queen Elizabeth over across the ocean. And then they put me up in a hotel, a Green Park Hotel there, and I wrote the script. And uh, th it wasn't made, and I assumed that they had been unhappy with what I'd done. But the years later, uh, Tony Hines, who was one of the three major producers there said, no, no, it wasn't that at all. We, we, it was a wonderful script. But we were having such trouble with the censors at that time. The censors had really come down on them hard for both Frankenstein and Dracula. And when they got the, my script for I Am Legend, I think they changed the title to The Night Creatures. Uh, when they got my script, they said, oh, no, no, not again. You're not going to make this. And so they had to uh, sell it to Lippert over here. Well, it's, it, it's apparently inspired a lot of movies, people to make movies out of them. They haven't done it right yet. I don't think, uh, I don't think they will now. I think it's, it's probably uh, passe now, even though it's a very good novel. I couldn't be out here in the daylight if I was one of them. You know that they can't come out until sundown. I did a lot of research. I went to a doctor and asked her about it. And, and I explained scientifically, I believe, why a vampire is what, what he or she is. Why you had to drive a stake into his chest. You couldn't shoot it because the wound would immediately seal itself. But the stake held the wound open and the germ with the, kept, with the bacillus, whatever, that kept it alive mutated instantaneously into a destructive bacilli which reduced them to dust. And then I explained all the other aspects of going across water, why they don't see themselves in a mirror, it's a hysterical blindness. You're freaks. I'm a man. The last man. It seems to be regarded as a classic. To me, it was just another novel. Both in that and The Shrinking Man, I tried to do them each chronologically. And it just seemed to go on endlessly, so I thought, no, I better just jump right in and build up the background in increments throughout the story. And I started to write The Shrinking Man in the same way, chronologically, uh, with him slowly going through this process of getting smaller and smaller. And I realized, no, I, no good. I, so I jumped right into the story and then fill in the the backstory in increments. And I've done that on a number of occasions and I think it works quite well. Like in the book, uh, there's this vampire who used to live in the neighborhood named Ben Cortman and he's real hard. He's always trying to break into the house. He wants to kill the hero, Neville. And then later on I have a flashback where he's going to work and the man gets in the car and, and the line for the ends of the chapter is, good morning, said Ben Cortman. So I couldn't have done that if I hadn't jumped back and forth in time. But it made a, made a nice uh, little moment, jarring moment at the end of the chapter. Stories about people who have died and, and have come back. They're stories, Ben, stories. And why are the infected people always so tired in the daytime? Why can't they stand the sunlight? Why are they only seen at night? I should have set them really far in the future because I didn't realize that they would still be showing Twilight Zones, you know, in the year 2001. And uh, when I wrote the book, 1976 was way in the future. I wrote it in like 1953 or something. I've made that mistake several times uh, in, in the story Steel. I also said in 1976 was for the Twilight Zone back in the late 50s or early 60s. But if you've had it too far in the future, then you've got to change the whole civilization. 
I want all of it. Why are you here? To find out if you know any more than we do. You know far less. We're alive. Infected, yes, but alive. They decided to uh, revise it, and uh, it was still basically the same story, but uh, I, was, uh, I was unhappy with it, and uh, uh, I called the Writers Guild and said, uh, please take my name off this, and they said, well, if, if we do that, you, you, lose, you lose residuals in the future. And since I had four children, I thought, well, no, that's not a good idea. So I came up with, uh, with Logan Swanson, which was Logan was the maiden name of my wife's mother, and Swanson was the maiden name of my mother. So that's where he came from. I indeed am Logan Swanson. <laughs>